It is five minutes journey from Osioko mainland to Madua village. We are told by the locals who promised to guide us to this mystery village turned island. <laughs> Osioko sits right at the border of Siaya and Busia counties and the fisher folk here speak Luo and Kinyala interchangeably. We navigate through the mild mid-morning waves on the expansive Lake Victoria. It takes us 20 minutes and not five as promised to get to this channel. One that will lead us to Madua village after several twists and turns. This is the only way to get in and out of Madua village. There is not a single road here. At last, and after another 20 minutes, we come to Madua primary school, a school that has remained resilient over the years despite the odds. The first term is about to come to an end, but the teachers and learners here have been in school for barely a month. So, so far, this may be our second year, it's the second week. Tango to Rudi. This is your second week? Yeah, Tango to Rudi. The dilapidated school infrastructure here is a testimony of the damage the regular floods have done to the school that once upon a time was accessible by foot. Access to these other facilities, you to come to Chakula, Hakuna. Kiangalia po Malipopoti, Hakuna Hotel. We are relying on mostly Omena. Na naifu vitu vingine vingine uji. Initially designed to be a day mixed primary school, the environmental realities have made this impossible. You no, know, it is not official when it comes to boarding, but now we are forced to they spend here. In fact, these are classes, sometimes they host them during night hours. Here, everything including the school bell is improvised. The classrooms with all their limitations are used for learning during the day and at night they are converted into dormitories. Despite mosquito infestation, some of these pupils here sleep without mosquito nets. A boat donated to the school by the county government is grounded. So that one now has worsened the situation. Who's, uh, getting outside is a very big challenge. The school management here say that last year they had a student population of about 270 and now they are talking about less than 200 pupils. This is a challenge that they are saying can only be solved if all the stakeholders come together and offer a long-term solution to this. <laughs> Sanitation is another big challenge in this school that education officials have given a wide berth. And with the broken down pit latrines, any slight increase in water levels is a sure reason for the closure of the school. We have some, uh, a few community trainees who have been trained, but they are just issuing panadols to at least reduce the pains. Otherwise, just proper treatment, we don't have that access. 100 meters from the school is this structure that once upon a time was a dispensary. It was last used in 2006. As the worsening conditions of Madua village necessitated migration of locals to other places, it is now a ghost structure. What was the issue of the people here? Yes, it was. It was the issue of the people here. It was the issue of the people here. It was the issue of the people here. It was the issue of the Kanzi <laughs> through the MP. It is a village that has over the years transformed into an island thanks to the rising water levels of Lake Victoria, over siltation and the shallowing of Rivayala Delta. What the government should do is to desilt, to dredge these rivers. And we have a very big dredger in Kisumu. And even the county governments are not taking initiative because this thing may not be expensive. If the gov national government and uh, county governments put their uh, 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 acts together, 
And these things are affecting people. Yes, we are getting relief food, but that's not enough. We can, we can grow our own food, especially with people who live along the lake. Kevin Ogutu, KTN News. That